in Delaware at the 76ers Fieldhouse, Friday, September 20th. Doors open at 7 a.m., and it's free. Welcome back to First Take. Roz Golden Wood A here with Stephen A. Smith, Max Keller, and Damian Woody joining us as well. Uh, Stephen A., you have been teasing the fans well, all show long. What kind of news do you well, have for well, us? It's not news per se. I just want to let everybody know you, Molly, I know, I know she's watching um, at home, Damian, Max. Yesterday, I did an appearance on WBLS in New York, uh, teasing, you know, the show that we're about to have next week for HBCU Week at Delaware State next Friday. And I had the pleasure of running into the lovely girlfriend, the lovely lady of Mr. Colin Kaepernick, uh, Nessa. I think her last name is Diab. I think it's pronounced Diab. If I mispronounced the name, I apologize. Mm -hmm. First thing I want to say is that she was incredibly classy mm -hmm. and respectful, her and her entire team. I took no offense to them approaching me, but they wanted to correct some things for the record. Okay. Uh, she specifically. Um, she said Colin Kaepernick has never been offered a job. Not by Miami, not by Baltimore, not by Denver, not by Seattle. She said that Colin Kaepernick has not reached an agreement where he's prohibited from or not wanting to play in the National Football League any longer. Hmm. He is still training every single day. He is ready to go. He would love a phone call. He would love to be in the National Football League. And any assertions to the contrary is patently false. So those were the two points that she wanted to make sure that she made. And she obviously, respectfully, I might add, took issue with me proclaiming that four teams, he had an opportunity to be with these four teams, because she's saying that's not true. She doesn't care what anybody's saying. I, ensure, I assured her folks in the NFL and what the NFL PA say differently. But nevertheless, she emphatically denies that that is the truth. And obviously, she is directly connected to the number one Absolutely. source. So this is what she is saying. I assured her at that moment in time that any kind of, of information pertaining to Colin Kaepernick from this day forward, make no mistake about it, you know, I will reach out to her. She is free to communicate with me. I made sure to ask her to extend. I have extended an invitation mm -hmm. to Colin Kaepernick and her. Yes. And Eric Reed, if he wants to come. All right. I've gotten the okay from the boss. Mm -hmm. They could come up in here for the entire two hours. If just, just so we're clear. Mm -hmm. You know, so no one is in a position to say misinformation is being disseminated. Their positions are being misrepresented, Max, or anything like that in any way. I have offered them an open invitation to come on this show for the entire two hours. Obviously, she did not say yes to that. I don't know what Colin Kaepernick's position is going to be. I don't know him, haven't met him. I certainly have no agenda when it comes to him other than to interview him. That would be nice. But I just want to emphasize to everybody out there, everybody knows how tightly connected she is to him, yep. and she deserved the right to speak up for him to me because she was in the news. You know, people were saying she tweeted out some things and things of that nature. So it wasn't just his name mm -hmm. under fire. It was hers as well. And I appreciate the classy manner in which she and her entire team approached me to address these issues. And I'm letting you know now, they say he's never gotten a job offer. He would like to have one. He's ready to play in the NFL again right now. And he hopes to get a call. And I retorted by saying he and her, mm -hmm. and if they want to bring Eric Reed too, they are welcome to come on here for the entire two hours. Anytime they want, just give me a heads up, let me know, and we will make it happen, Max. That's what I told them. Colin... Yeah, Colin Kaepernick has broken no law of the land, nor has he broken a single rule of the NFL. When last seen on a football field, he was clearly one of the best 64 quarterbacks in the world. The fact that he doesn't have a job in the NFL is an outrage, and I second that. We'd love to have him on the show. Absolutely. I think it would be absolutely fascinating to hear from Cap and all of them. I mean, sometimes Cap's silence can be powerful, Sometimes, sometimes, not. sometimes it can be confusing. And that's exactly what yep. I told her yesterday, yep. and that's why I extended the invitation, yep. because we want to be fair here. And if they're saying that there's erroneous information that's being disseminated about him, we want to give him the platform to correct it any time he wants to. I, that's on them. Whatever they decide to do is their business, but I can't applaud her and her team enough. 
They approached me in a very classy fashion, and I appreciate that. There was no hostility whatsoever. She was just explaining herself, and I appreciate the class that she showed. Absolutely. Nothing like hearing it from the horse's mouth and the transparency there. Speaking of hearing it from the horse's mouth, one guy who isn't often silent, it's A.B. Let's go to him, all right? With each passing day, it looks more and more likely that Antonio Brown will make his Patriots debut in week two. He's practiced Wednesday, Thursday, and he will again practice today with the team. Sources tell our Jeremy Fowler that the Patriots and Raiders were unaware of the civil lawsuit against Brown before it was filed because lawyers for Brown and his accuser were having confidential discussions. On the very sensitive subject matter, A.B. hit Instagram Live with his candid thoughts. The devil gonna try to bring you down when you get closer to your goals. The key is, don't let him. Now I was thinking about it. All the basketball players in the world, all the soccer players in the world, they get love and embrace. Maybe we need a football USA team so the world can love us. Because all we get is hate. All right, let's welcome in former Patriot and Super Bowl champion Damian Woody. Uh, Stephen A., would the Pats be making a mistake by allowing A.B. to play? No, they would not. But let me be very, very clear. Another clownish diatribe on the part of Antonio Brown. USA that's, football? That, you don't no, like that? No, no, no. I'm saying that's rife with inaccuracies. All football players get is hate. Really? Julio Jones getting any hate? Tom Brady getting any hate? Mm -mm. I mean, my uh, thought that exactly. I mean, who did? Who, what the hell are you talking Julio about? Julio Jones. I mean, just just be quiet. I mean, really, he's not making. He's just not telling the truth. That is false and it's inaccurate, and that's that. Now, having said all of that, I still play him if I'm the Patriots. <laughs> I mean, look, you trying got, to win games? I got today. him. I got him. <laughs> I committed to nine million dollars. He's eligible to play. Excuse me, why would I not play him? I see no harm in playing him whatsoever. The commissioner is clearly going to address this matter in some way, shape, form, or fashion. The interview with Miss Brittany Taylor, uh, the, the uh, accuser uh, who's accused Antonio Brown of raping her, mm -hmm. takes place next week. So if the commissioner and the league office is going to interview her next week, mm -hmm. that's, before, that's after this Sunday's game. So until that interview takes place and the league makes a decision, then he's eligible to play in the National Football League. And if he's eligible to play in the National Football League, and I'm already on the hook to give him nine million ounce, why would I not use him? Considering the fact that he's the second best wide receiver in the world. In the world. Why would I not use him if he's already eligible to play? I'll tell you Go why. Number Go one... Well, just from, a, from the point of view of X's and O's on the field, you don't need them. You're playing the worst team in football, you just spanked your, the Steelers that are not a, well, such a bad need team. They didn't Spanked them, them and, now you're playing the and now you're playing the worst team in football. I mean, right now. That's from a f football point of view. Why not? You're paying them. Um, the Patriots, as you've mentioned many times, uh, Robert Kraft, uh, the one issue is what, Stephen A., that you can't, like if there's even smoke, let alone fire, Domestic violence, you can't play for the assault. Patriots is what? Domestic violence, sexual assault. Okay. So, so, so this is, and, and, and in terms of interviewing everyone, because you and Damian both made the point yesterday, hey, we need, like, let the process play out, and I'm a due process guy, right? I understand that. In this case, the, the NFL and the Patriots should move more expeditiously before this game. And this is the only question I would need to know to see if he's on the field or not. Was that you who sent the text message that's out there right now about what you did while she was asleep? If the answer is yes to that, I don't need to know whether he was lying in the text message or whether it was true. Whether the, he can contextualize it as part of an ongoing kind of relationship they had where that was okay somehow, I don't need to know any of that. If, if he sent that text message, which it, like, if he denies it, okay, fine, then maybe he can get on the field. But if he's saying, yep, that was me who sent that text message, he's not on the field for me this Sunday. Because at, because <laughs> at best... It's, as they say, the optics are terrible. At best, it looks terrible for Antonio Brown, the Patriots, and the league. At worst, it's a non-consensual act. So that's the whole shooting match for me. And as for, well, they haven't talked to anyone yet, move quicker, NFL and Patriots, before this weekend's games. You should have at least ascertained that fact. 
Did you send the text? Was that you? Yes or no? I want to break this down really, really simple. Um, number one, I think there's an important distinction here. This is not a criminal, criminal case. This is a civil case. And I think that's really important in this matter. And because of that, you, we've already heard that Commissioner Roger Goodell is probably not going to put him on the commissioner's exempt list because of that fact right there. That's number one. Now, as it relates to the Patriots themselves, listen, he's one of the best wide receivers in the National Football League, arguably the best wide receiver in the National Football League. Ever. You're, pay you're paying him $9 million. You gave him $9 million guaranteed. If he's eligible to play, why wouldn't you pay him? Why wouldn't you play him? Okay? And when it comes, listen, Bill Belichick, he thinks the long game. Okay? I'm going to go back to last year for a second. Who's the biggest threat to the New England Patriots in the AFC? Kansas City. Kansas City Chiefs. Last year, in the opening week, they, they beat the Kansas City Chiefs. They didn't punt one time. One time, and they beat them by three points. Do you know how crazy that is? And if it wasn't in for the AFC Championship game, okay, D4 jumping off sides, the Kansas City Chiefs would have went on to win to the Super Bowl. Bill Belichick knows the biggest threat to them is no other team in the AFC. The biggest threat to the Patriots is Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs because they have firepower unlike any other team in the National Football League. They went out. They drafted a wide receiver in the first round. When was the last time Patriots drafted a wide receiver in the first round? Okay? They go out here. Antonio Brown's available. They pick him up. They knew about all the baggage. But they got the foresight to see we got to contend with the Kansas City Chiefs at some point down the road. Listen, they don't know if, this, if Antonio Brown is going to implode, but they hold all the cards here. They have the leverage. If it works out, they're in a great position when they eventually will go up against the Kansas City Chiefs toe-to-toe -to -toe as far as scoring. So to me, it's really simple. He's not going to get suspended, it looks like, more than, more than likely, because it's a civil thing. Okay, and the Patriots are looking down the road. It's not about this week. They're looking down the road to possibly playing the Kansas City Chiefs at some point in the later part of the year. All right, guys, I have an update for you. Um, ESPN's Adam Schefter uh, has put out the NFL will not place Antonio Brown on the NFL's commissioner's exempt list at this moment. So, Stephen A., what does that mean exactly now that we know he won't be put on that list? Well, he won't put him on for now. Again, what I was talking about yesterday was that they needed to wait. They need to wait until they hear from Brittany Taylor. Um, the plausibility of her arguments, the believability of her factors into the equation. And then you need to get a sense of how far she is willing to go. Let's say, for example, that she decides it's going to expand beyond civil, a civil case, that she's going to do everything she can to provoke criminal action against him. Uh, and let's say that that's her agenda and her objective. The commissioner might have to take that into consideration and say, do I really want this problem a month from now, two months from now, three months from now? I might want to cut this off at the path by cutting you off at the knees right now and putting you on the commissioner's exempt list. This is why it's so important to first talk to her and to find out her perspective on all of this and more importantly, how far she's willing to take it. Because once you know that as the league, then you have to take those things into account before you decide what Antonio Brown is worth and is not. Now, some people sit up there and be like, hell with all of that. You know what? Sit him down now. But the commissioner's looking at it from the standpoint that that also might set a bad precedent that might cause him more problems with the Players Association because it's not a criminal case. So he's weighing one against the other. That's why Brittany Taylor is so pivotal in all of this. Well, I, I just want to add into that, too, that the commissioner's exempt list, if he was put on it, he, he, gets would, still, he would still get paid. Right, but just not but, allowed to play. Right, and he wouldn't count against that 53-man active roster. The fact that he will count against that active roster count doesn't that put more pressure on the Pats than to say, hey, he's counting. We got, he's got to play. Well, they, they're going to say that anyway because they gave him $9 million. Of the money, See too. What I'm saying? You, the you money went back too. to the money. They're going to okay. they, they're right because they're bad as to them. Max? Guys, again, I don't think – I understand your point, and Damian, I understand your point. I think it's a good one in terms of Belichick's long game. Um, but my point is this. 
due process, absolutely. Almost every time we have an argument like this, I say, wait a minute, let it play out. Guys, the only fact that the commissioner needs to know in terms of protecting the shield, the image, all that stuff, is it good or bad for the league? The only thing he needs to know, or the Patriots for that matter, is Antonio, was it you who sent that text message? If the answer is yes, and there's no reason you can't at least, look, if he says no, fine, let it play out. But if he says, yeah, that was me, then he shouldn't be playing on Sunday, guys, because at, at, at best, it just looks terrible. And even if you're going to say that verbally to someone, you put it in writing. So at best, that's a stupid tax you pay. Sit down. I, I don't understand. Like, I, I get it under normal circumstances, but we have something in writing that he said to the, I'm not even talking about the way he was kind of cruel and all that stuff. I mean, the thing he admitted to in black and white. I just need to know, did you send that? If the answer is yes, he's not playing Sunday, if I'm the commissioner. Go ahead, Damien. I think it's, I think it's really simple. Well, I spoke on it yesterday. You can't, make a, you can't make a move like that if you haven't spoken to all parties involved. You haven't spoken to Brittany Taylor to get, her, to get a feel for her side of the story and uh, hear her account. So without having to speak to her, why would you throw him on the commissioner's exempt list? Listen, if, listen if we, we're specifically talking about the Patriots here. Let's not forget, these teams are in it for one thing, and that's winning football games, okay? So as long as Antonio Brown is eligible and the commissioner and, – and Adam Schefter already said in, the, in his report that the commissioner doesn't plan on putting Antonio Brown on the exempt list as of right now, why wouldn't the Patriots put him out there and play to play? You're in it to win it, man. That's, that's what it's all about. It's really that simple for me. All right. Thank you, Damien, for joining us. Uh, we'll have you around on the show. Um, guys, we'll come back to this, okay? We're going we're gonna to go to talk about Dak and the boys. They're taking on another NFC East foe. But should they be on upset alert versus Washington? We'll debate that.